Today, we visit Chincoteague National Wildlife Refuge off the coast of Virginia and Maryland on the Atlantic coast of the United States. These barrier islands form an ideal stopping place for snow geese and for other migratory birds on their journey south each year. The fertile marshes and food-rich tidal zones provide nourishment for the snow geese, ducks, wading birds, songbirds, and shorebirds which flock here by the millions each year. Assateague Island, where most of the refuge lies, has been important to the local economy for more than 300 years. Fishing and hunting provided food for the early settlers and a source of income. Another source of income were the shipwrecks along the island. Early American coastal trading had to brave the ever-shifting sand bottom near the islands. Many ships were wrecked or stranded. Storms drove many more ashore on the islands. It was not unusual for the locals to salvage barrels of rum, molasses, sugar, or preserved meat from the seashore. The most famous shipwreck was the Dispatch. President Harrison and Secretary of the Navy Benjamin Tracy planned to visit the Naval Proving Grounds on the Potomac River in 1891. The yacht's lieutenant mistook the orange glow from the Assateague Lighthouse for the offshore hue on the Winter Quarter Shoals lightship. He steered the yacht off course and onto the shoals. No one was reported injured and everyone made it safely to shore. There is a legend that a Spanish galleon carrying a cargo of ponies sank off of Assateague in the 1700s and some of the ponies were able to swim to shore. Another legend claims the famed pirate Blackbeard gifted a herd of horses to one of his 14 wives who lived on Assateague Island. Others think that the Chincoteague ponies are descendants of colonial horses brought to Assateague Island in the 17th century by eastern shore planters when crop damage caused by free-roaming animals led colonial legislatures to enact laws requiring fences and place taxes on livestock. So many ships were wrecked along this coast that in 1831 the U.S. Congress authorized the construction of the lighthouse on the southern end of Assateague. The lighthouse was finally constructed in 1833 to warn ocean travelers of the dangerous shoals offshore. Later, a more powerfully illuminated brick lighthouse was in the process of being built, but was postponed due to the Civil War. Work resumed after the war, and the lighthouse was finished in 1867. A new assistance keeper's house was constructed in 1910, and in 1929 the keeper's staff was reduced. In 1933, the original keeper's house was removed and an oil lamp was replaced with an electric lamp. The U.S. Coast Guard still maintains the light at Chincoteague. In 1875, Congress established a life-saving station on Assateague Beach. Over the next 40 years, the men of the life-saving station made 174 daring rescues, mostly during the winter months. In 1915, the Coast Guard took over the responsibility for these rescues. Market hunting for birds, especially the greater snow goose, impacted their populations. Market hunters developed guns which could bring down a dozen or so birds in a single shot. With construction of the lighthouse, development of oyster and other commercial fisheries, and the continuing of livestock racing, Assateague Village became established northeast of the lighthouse. The population grew to 225 by the turn of the century and supported a school, store, and churches. By 1915, there were 25 to 30 families in Assateague Village, not including the lighthouse keepers and their households. The village decline began about 1922 after Dr. Samuel B. Fields of Baltimore acquired most of the land on the Virginia portion of Assateague Island. Fields had his land east of the village fenced and posted. His overseer, Oliphant, who lived in a bungalow across the road from the old life-saving station, refused to permit the villagers to cross Fields' property to get to Tom's Cove. With their access to the cove cut off, the villagers began to move off the island. Their houses were jacked up, placed on skids, taken to the waterfront. There they were placed on barges and floated across the Assateague Channel to be relocated on Chincoteague Island. The last person to leave the village was Bill Scott, who had operated the village's one general store. Today the village site is marked only by some buildings 
foundations and a cemetery. 1943, the S.B. Fields family, the principal landowners, sold their property to the U.S. government for use as a national wildlife refuge. Found on the island is the Asian Sitka elk, which was released in the 1920s. They are smaller than the white-tailed deer and have a distinct all-white rump. Sitka can also be distinguished by their white spots, which they retain year-round. The only native deer present in the mid-Atlantic is the white-tailed deer, who prefers wooded areas and grazing meadows. Its tail is white on the underside and springs upward when alarmed. There are squirrels and other mammals inhabiting the island, especially in the small forest which was decimated by the southern pine beetle a few years back. Efforts have been made to reforest the island with hardwood trees, which the pine beetle will not attack. Refuge biologists monitor the health of the squirrel population on a regular basis to make sure that there is no outbreak of diseases. The bald eagle, which was once very scarce and endangered, is plentiful now on the island, nesting quite successfully. A newcomer to the island is the cattle egret. Amazingly, the U.S. government thinks they are native to Africa and came to the United States by way of Latin America to Texas. But some of us know the story of how they arrived, how the Hudgens Ranch in Texas imported them from India, where they are native, to be companions to the Brahma cattle, which also were brought from India. Several non-native species have begun to inhabit the island on a regular basis, including Canada geese. Amazingly, since the U.S. government also believes that there is global warming, the geese are nesting further and further south each year which puts pressure on the food supply in the wildlife refuge where they don't really expect to have these geese year-round. The Chincoteague ponies are in the same situation because if they overgraze then there is not enough food for other mammals which need to graze as well, for example the deer. So they're carefully controlled each year only a certain amount of ponies are allowed to stay on the island. And it's the same with the Sitka elk. Controlled hunts are carried out each year to make sure that the population doesn't overexpand.
Thank you.